I'm Fox 35's Lou Ann Sorrell, and this is When Florida Attacks. Our series focuses on people who've come face to face with nature and live to tell the tale. We start with a firefighter who nearly had his arm ripped off by a gator. Fox 35's Connor Hansen shows us how that encounter has changed his perspective on life. The one that actually got me was uh, was bigger than this one. See, it got some chumbers on it. A relic from Costin Kiefer's former hobby, yeah. alligator hunting. Over a year ago, he and two friends were on Lake Jessup trying to catch a 12-footer when it jumped into their 16-foot boat. He got a hold of my arm and uh, then everything just kind of went south and uh, Everything happened fast, and before I knew it, I could hear the skin rip and the bone crush in my arm, and uh, luckily he, he let go right after that, and I was able to keep my arm. As a firefighter and paramedic, he feared the worst. My first thought was that my life is over as I know it. Uh, I got to start over because I knew, you know, being a paramedic for years that I've seen injuries where injuries like this is most likely going to end up with an amputation. The bite forces of alligators and crocodilians in general are, are, are really remarkable. We spoke uh, with Dr. Gregory Erickson, a Florida state professor and alligator bite expert. I'm often asked what to do if you're bitten by uh, an alligator and uh, basically hold on. Uh, the, this animal is probably going to go into a spin, uh, potentially, you know, uh, causing dismemberment, things like that. Basically, there's not much you can do if one of these animals seizes your arm. You're kind of at the mercy of the animal. Erickson says you can try fighting back, but it's a myth that you can poke them in the eye to get free or pry their jaws open. An animal such as a 12-foot alligator, like we're talking about here, could probably generate about 2,000 pounds of bite force, literally a ton. So, you know, think about, uh, you know, setting a ton of mass on those jaws coming down. Uh, that's what an animal like that was capable of. After a year of surgeries and therapy, Costin oh, wow. Kiefer says his arm now has full function, allowing him to do everything he so used to do as a firefighter. Once we get on calls where it takes everything, I'm, I'm in full. I don't even pay attention to my arm anymore. And uh, I've kind of gotten used to working a little bit different with my arm and my hand. Um, and it just kind of becomes second nature now. And while he hasn't hunted alligators since he nearly lost his arm, he has been back out on the water, even fishing for sharks. He's also planning a bear hunt. But that almost deadly encounter has changed his perspective. I've started taking a lot more vacation time, uh, spending time with my family, my kids, um, and, you know, go out and explore the country and the world. In Lake County, Connor Hansen, Fox 35 News. And it's not just on the water where you can see a gator. Check out this video. It shows a gator stopping traffic on State Road 429. A viewer emailed us this clip showing police escorting the gator off the busy road. It happened right near Lake Apopka. And it is just another example that gators are always on the move, especially during mating season, which typically runs from May to June. So what should you do if you come across an alligator in your neighborhood? Well, we sent Fox 35's Dave Puglisi to find out. Behind me are about 150 hungry gators. Getting this close at Gatorland is all right. But if you come across something like this in the wild, this is how you can protect yourself. Gators, let's go, let's go! It's feeding time at Gatorland. Head up, head up. And while it may be fun to feed the gators okay. here, it's the number one thing not to do for gators out in the wild. Getting fed a cheeseburger, a hot dog, a piece of chicken, a steak, you know, out of your backyard. If he's in a backyard pond, sure, they're going to love it, you know, but they're going to keep coming closer every time. As the gators come closer and closer, they become more and more of a nuisance. Some gators are even known to go after your pets. He went after seven dogs in this neighborhood and he got a hold of four. Three of the four he got a hold of, a German Shepherd, a Boxer, or a Labrador. Out in the wild, alligators don't want anything to do with humans, but it is best to keep a safe distance from the water's edge. 25 feet from water's edge is a good buffer when walking around. You don't want to be right down at the water's edge. You don't want to let your dogs go swimming in the water, you know, because in the water, it's going to look like an easy meal. 
Gatorland expert Brandon Fisher also says don't do anything to provoke a gator, like try to touch it or pet it. If a gator starts running at you, you just have to hope you can outrun him. Zigzags don't work. They're very flexible. They can turn on a dime, bite their own tail. So that's an old wife's tail made up by an old wife who want to see her husband get eaten probably. <laughs> Remember, it is illegal to feed or harm a gator in the state of Florida. If you do come across a nuisance gator in your neighborhood, make sure you call the FWC. At Gatorland, Dave Figlisi, Fox 35 News. And sometimes gators just want to have fun, even getting a hole in one. Adam just hit the green. And a gator just had the ball in his mouth. He just spit it out. This gator was spotted at Plantation Bay Country Club in Ormond Beach. Mike Harb recorded this video. He and his friends walked up to the gator, and as you can see right here, it was holding that golf ball in its mouth. Then the gator just gets up and walks away, taking the ball with it. Well, every year, spring breakers flock to Florida's gorgeous beaches, but the fun in the sun was cut short for one young woman. An encounter with a Portuguese man of war sent her to the hospital. Fox 35's Dave Puglisi shares what you need to know if you come across one. I felt something like sting me, and at first I was like, maybe it's my my bathing suit because it's a stinging sensation that continued to spread across Hannah Almanzar's body. And it was spreading all over my chest to the point where it was like at my heart where I felt like I couldn't even breathe. Like Hannah rushed out of the waters at Lauderdale by the sea in Fort Lauderdale to find the rash getting worse by the second. Her parents took her straight to the hospital. They gave me like a little numbing gel sort of thing to put on top of it. And then they gave me a shot in my leg. And it was like a shot of like in, like intense Advil, I think is what it was. Hannah had been stung by a Portuguese man of war. The vibrantly colored creature has recently been spotted on Volusia County beaches by some locals. And if you hear me yell, you know that I've gotten stung. Chad Troxell of the Marine Discovery Center in New Smyrna Beach has come in contact with the gas-filled creature many times. Nothing that I've ever been stung by in Florida has hurt as much as a man of war. Even so, Truxel says the man of war are not to be feared, but more so aware of. He says their tentacles can reach up to 100 feet and stay charged even after they have washed ashore. If you are stung, he says hot water can help alleviate the pain. But really, the immediate thing is don't touch it with your hand. Actually, use something else, even if it's a stick or a shell, to try to scrape the tentacle off because it's still firing as you're agitating it. Man of war float across the surface of the ocean are moved purely by the wind. Your local lifeguards will be able to tell you if they've been spotted along the beach. For them, they can let you know what to do to be safe for the day. They can let you know where the rip currents are. They can let you know if we're having jellyfish or man of war washing up on the beach for the day. As for Hannah, I, I think I'm going to be out of the water for a while. I'm going back to visit my parents when school's out. Um, I'm probably not going to be going to the beach. <laughs> Dave Puglisi, Fox 35 News. If you live in the Sunshine State, chances are pretty high that you've seen a snake. There are 50 different species here in Florida, and some are venomous. As Fox 35's Connor Hansen reports, you need to have a plan if you're ever bitten. There are more than a thousand snakes here at the Reptile Discovery Center in Deland. They're from all over the world, many of them deadly. This is Timaquan. He's an eastern indigo snake. It's actually the largest kind of snake out of the 50 found in central Florida. He's not venomous, luckily, but there are four breeds that are here. Coral snakes, pygmy rattlesnakes, the eastern diamondback, and the cottonmouth or water moccasin. Even a very minor snake bite can still be a medical emergency. Snake venoms are complex cocktails of proteins and enzymes, toxins, and um, they, they, this is a multi-systemic poisoning in many cases. You are, you're being affected at a number of levels. Carl Barton runs the center and the toxin venom lab, and he should know Barton has been bitten nearly a dozen times. Snake bites hurt. Um, they're frightening. You're, you're never entirely sure what the outcome is going to be. So you've just uh, kind of turned into a walking chemistry experiment, and, and that's frightening. And um, they're painful. They swell oftentimes. 
If you are bitten, Barton says you should call 911 right away. Trying to suck the venom out or using a tourniquet are useless and might make things worse. Antivenom is the only cure. The process of making it starts at places like this. Barton extracts the venom straight from the snake's mouth before it's sent to pharmaceutical companies, labs, and universities. Some is even used for cancer research. There are probably about uh, a half dozen facilities in North America, probably about 35 worldwide. So, so the market for snake venom is tiny. It's very specialized. In Volusia County, Connor Hansen, Fox 35 News. And Barden says snake bites are pretty rare because typically snakes won't attack unless they're provoked. Here in Florida, if you leave food outside, there's a good chance a bear is going to find it. Check out this video. Tim and Amanda Hoover caught a bear grabbing pizza out of their trash can. This all went down in Altamont Springs and the couple says this isn't the first time either. We'll look on the camera first to see what's going on. And then if they're sitting right there, we'll come to the window and look out. It's pretty weird seeing them this close up. There was a pair of black bears there. The Hoovers say they are looking into getting those bear proof trash cans. Well, bears may seem cute from a distance or when they're caught on camera, but not so much when you come face to face with one in your neighborhood. Fox 35's Dave Puglisi spoke with a woman who was attacked by a bear while out walking her dog. Uh -huh, it's course in the back is 28 um, inches of the laceration between my back, my face, my neck. The physical and mental scars continue to heal for Ida Sarabia three months after she and her dog came face to face with a startled mama bear. Six weeks with a headache. I had to do physical therapy. One of the things that I regret is the, they put her to sleep. Neighbors cornered the bear in a tree until help arrived. See the eyes right there? The bear had pieces of Ida's clothes in its claws. The Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission say they had no other choice but to put the bear down. When a bear takes some sort of action like this, that allows us a window into that bear's mind that, hey, when they feel threatened rather than run, they might actually do something else. Ida is worried about someone else getting attacked. The dark, it can be early in the morning or it can be at night. But now we kind of like, we have to stick to the light. Ida feels terrible. Two yearlings were left without a mama. She wishes agents would have relocated her instead. We have 404 people per square mile in Florida. There is just no place we can put that bear where we feel comfortable that it won't encounter someone else. Black bears don't want to interact with humans, but the interactions are inevitable. The FWC says to avoid those, to secure the trash around your home. And if you do come in contact with a black bear, to make noise and give them a path to escape. And to Barry, Dave Puglisi, Fox 35 News. We've told you how dangerous all these animals are, but if you still want your own encounter, there's a job for you. Florida Fish and Wildlife is hiring special bear contractors in hopes of promoting safety. Officials believe there are more than 4,000 black bears here in Florida. In 2021, there were nearly 6,000 phone calls about bear encounters. Our contractors are that, that first level um, where they reach out, figure out if additional help is needed, figure out if law enforcement needs to be there, figure out if the biologists need to be there. FWC is hoping to find people with flexible schedules and vehicles that can tow a trailer. You can visit fox35orlando.com to learn more on how to apply. And to keep up with other animal attack stories here in Florida, you can just download the Fox 35 News app. We'll send you push alerts right to your phone so you're the first to know. That app is free for Android and Apple users. I'm Luann Sorrell. Thanks for watching.